Aloha. Welcome to the Condo Insider Show, the show where we talk about association living. Um, today, we're going to be clarifying a very hot topic, the hot topic of Act 192, uh, in other words, um, clarification of the priority of payments. And we have an expert on our show today. Welcome back, Jane. And Jane can talk to us about the history as well as the need for um, the priority of payment policy. Right. Thank you, I, and Jane. this has been, you know, kind of controversial recently because, you know, there, you know, there, there was that bill about non-judicial foreclosure, and you know, and, and I think people kind of get them mixed up, and they said, oh well, yeah, the priority of payments had to do, you know, with a lot of foreclosures happening, and yes, some it did have something to do with foreclosures, and we're going to explain how that interacted, uh, and 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 right, and because the priority of payments was repealed. In, in an act that happened not this session but last session, yeah. 195, and the, and I will explain why that had to happen. Yeah, but, yeah, that's that was going to be my next question. Yeah. Like maybe give the history of what led to that, and then how we got from 195 to 192. Right. So yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Okay. Okay. So um, you know, uh, like I said, act. Uh, 195 was passed last year, and what that did is it repealed the priority of payments policy. And people say, well, what's that? You know, well, what yeah, and even to take a step back from that, I think what we should also uh, speak about a little bit is exactly what is the priority of payment? What okay. does that mean? You're right. Priority payments was a method uh, for the associations, because associations collect maintenance fees, right? right? And it was a way for the associations to collect late charges, and interest and uh, fines. fines and attorney's fees and things like that. And you may say, well, you know, why did they have to put, a, put in a method? And it was because, you know, with associations, and, you know, many people are uh, familiar with this, when they pay their maintenance fees, they do it on an automatic payment plan, like a sure pay. Very, you know, because it's easy. You yeah. sign the paperwork and you, you send it in, it. and every month they just deduct it from your bank account. Right, and so most property managers, uh, you know, have programs where homeowners can sign up and have their maintenance fees paid automatically, and very few, you know, use the coupons that are given by the management companies. And the coupon means that you get a coupon for your maintenance fees because the associations determine the maintenance fees on an annual basis. Right, right. They do their budget in the fall. They send out notices in December that say, okay. Come January 1, this is your maintenance fee for the next year, right? right. And at that same time, the, uh, if you're not on a sure pay or an automatic payment plan, you get coupons. And then you can send in your coupons with your payment to the management company for your maintenance fees. Now, the statute, but the statute, uh, you know, when I talk about the statute, I'm talking about 514A and then 514B in 2006. But those are the two condo statutes. But it didn't change. The statute talks about what is your maintenance fees. And the maintenance fees is what is uh, typically called your common expense payments. So if you were to, if, if you read the statute, you read 514A and 514B, uh, and they, there's lots of statutes about, you know, how do you pay your maintenance fees? How is it determined? You know, when can they change it? How can they increase it? They're, they don't talk about maintenance fees. They talk about common expense payments. Yes. Okay. Yep. So common expense payments means that, you know, the association, what they do is they add up all the um, uh, costs that it takes to run the building, the electricity, the water, the uh, employees, uh, the insurance, yeah. the, you, know, the, the, you know, the repairs, and, and, and they come up with a budget. And if you've got 100 people who live in that building, they take that budget, they're and divided they by 100, right. and, uh, and then uh, f figure out what the monthly charges are. And, and those are just estimates. And then they've got to add in some, you know, uh, uh, contingencies uh, and reserves. Right, and reserves. And, things like that. and so it's always an estimate. And, and then so then you, you, the uh, unit owners get the, the notices that your maintenance fee for the next year is now $500. Yeah. Okay. And then so they're, they're told to send in these payments. Yeah. But those payments don't include late charges or interest and, and, and those kinds of charges. 
And so what happened was... And they shouldn't. They shouldn't. You right. shouldn't budget for late fees and things like that. But, you know, the, but what happened is that when you've got this many people living in a building, you, you're going to have, you're some, going to, yeah. have some delinquencies. Right. And, and it, just, it, was, it was just cost... It was not cost efficient, you know, for the property managers to write letters and say, oh, you know, you missed your payment. Now you owe us a $25 late charge, you know, the labor and the cost of writing these letters. And so they, after a while, you know, the associations and their attorneys went to the legislature and said, oh, can you help us? And what we want is we want you to set up a statute that says that we can determine priority of payments. And so when the payments come in, the association can say, okay, with that money, we apply it in a certain order, right, mm -hmm. in a certain priority. And we can apply it to late charges and then interest and attorney's fees and finally to the common expense payments. Right. It's interesting that that's how it was initially devised, or I shouldn't say devised. The statutes gave the associations the authority to set up the priority of payment, but it's interesting that across the board it became late fees, legal fees, fines ahead of the maintenance fees right. in the past. Because that, that those, weren't, the the, those weren't included. And then, but, but the statute also said, if you do this, you need to do, have, it, have, a, have the board of directors meet and adopt the policy mm. that says that your priority of payments will be first to late charges, interest, attorneys. And it's in the statute that way. Mm -hmm. So naturally, the board would just take that language do a resolution, you've got, what, nine members on a board? Mm -hmm. All you need is a majority vote. And once you adopt that resolution, the statute says you have to notify all your owners. Okay? Yes, and that's important, too, notifying all, all of your owners. And, you know, but the statute, that portion of the statute was originally passed back in the 90s. Okay? That long ago. Yeah, that long ago. It was back in the 90s. And so what happened over, over, over a period of time, the units get bought and sold. Right? And so let's say you owned your unit in 1991, and so naturally when your board adopted the policy in maybe 1992, and you got the notice, you had notice of that that's what the board was going to do with your payments. But if you sold your new yeah. unit in 1999, your buyers, unless you told them or you gave them a copy of your letter, they didn't have a clue. Nobody told them that there was this priority of payments policy. It wouldn't become a um, product of the, in the escrow documents with the governing documents when you purchase your units? If you, Ideally, I would think. Because it's not so. a, an amendment to the bylaws. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not a, a declaration. And so, and that's what, that's what a lot of the problems. That's where they got and, and some lost property in the yeah, Some property managers on an annual basis sent out notices, you yeah. know, with their budget yeah, you know, I did that. Yeah, we did. We made that kind of a, a company policy procedure, if you will. Right, because otherwise, how are how are, how are they going to know? And yeah. how how are you going to be able to notify every new person who came in after adoption of the policy of what the policy was? And so, if it was an adopt a policy that was adopted by the association, it was up to the board to notify all the owners, and that includes the new owners who came in after the original initial adoption of the policy. Right. And that's what causes, that's what caused, you know, some of the problems that we're going to be talking about. Um, and, but anyway, um, uh, that's, that's how it started. And then, so now you have a statute and you have, uh, uh, you know, people, apply, and, and, you know, to, let's, and, and let me tell you where the problem begins. Let's say you're on sure pay, right? That means you're, Payments are being deducted automatically, automatically. and your, your, your uh, maintenance fees are $100, okay? That's your common expense payment, and so they're deducting $100 out of your bank account, and for some reason, the association issues a fine against you, and it's a $25 fine. You get the notice, you, you know, and you don't pay the fine, okay? What happens, the next maintenance fee payment that you make, they're going to deduct the $25 because that statute, the policy says, we apply it to late charges, interest, fines, attorney's fees. Right. So it, your $25 gets deducted. And guess what? Now, now you're, delinquent. you're delinquent. Yes. And now you get a late charge. Right. And, and does, does the association or their, their managing agent send you a letter saying you're delinquent? No. They don't because they say, oh, no, but 
we don't have to because we gave them notice of the policy. Right. And so once we give them notice, we don't have to give them any subsequent notice. They're supposed to know that. Well, it's a good practice to never ignore those notices. Right. <laughs> and send in that extra payment. Right. Otherwise, like you said, that your sure pay payment is going to, in the past, go against the, the fine first or any other legal fees or whatever. Um, it, you're, it won't automatically take a larger amount from sure pay because, like you said, those maintenance fees are kind of set in stone, and that's what it's going to subtract from your account every well to pay. And if you don't send in an additional payment, then, like you said, you're going to be delinquent. And then therein lies the problem. It starts to compound every month until, until you address it. Right. And, you know, to, to give you an example of, and to show that it might not even be uh, like a, a fine, I, I learned when I was, uh, uh, you know, advocating for a, a homeowner. Um, and, you know, the statute says that if, if you have a delinquency, you ask your association for an accounting. They have to give you an accounting. OK. And so when when and and and, and this person who was referred to me by a legislator and uh, the bill that she had was something like sixteen hundred dollars. OK. And a thousand dollars of it was what was was they said was a delinquency because because of the priority of payments. What they did was they, when you go delinquent, right, they apply it to that delinquency. And so it's never your uh, delinquent, uh, it's not applied to late charges or, or whatever. It's applied to it, but then what shows up on the books is your late charges. And what I found out is that the property management company is the one who has to trigger. They call, the, they do something, but they contact the bank and they trigger a debit because they have authorization to do that. On you know with short pay, mm -hmm. and when I went back and you know, when I contacted the property, I mean the the uh, the attorney who wrote the letter, I said you know we don't understand we dispute this you need to tell me how we got to sixteen hundred dollars the six hundred dollars is attorney's fees so I need to know where the, how you got the thousand dollars and so I went back two years two years that long ago that 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 because I could look at it and I, it took me about twenty minutes but you know you'd go and. What happened was in July of a year, two years prior, there was no debit. And, 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 so, so, and then what happened the next month, there's a late fee because there was no debit. And that's not the homeowner's fault because the homeowner has no control over the debit. And for some reason, the person in the accounting department or the property manager never did the debit, so it's not showing up. And it shows up on the statement as, you know, there's no charge. There's no charge for the, so. And so when I asked the, uh, the management company, they said, oh, oh, well, that means that they, they didn't do the debit. I said, so you guys trigger that. You go to the bank and trigger or so there's something that triggers that, that, that how, that's how you get the automatic payment from the bank the account. Sure pay. Yeah. Right. It's, it's and then what happens. So now now because they didn't do that, you're one month behind. And then the next month they do the debit. But now you're one month of, of common expense plus $25 late charge plus $1.50 for the interest. And, and, and this goes on. And then, and then after a while, you get attorney's fees. So now you get this $1,000 because you're all those months behind, two years. It, it was $600 two, just in late fees. Two years is a long time. And because but, the amount, you know, it, really in terms of the, the, the late charges and stuff like that, because it was like under a thousand dollars, they people, you know, the property manager. I guess they, they considered it wasn't really a big deal, you know. Of course, it's a big, big but, deal. But what happens is, by the time you get to the homeowners, and you know, they get this bill, and it's like, what, what is this about? Yeah, well, I find that that's why it's a it's a good best practice for management companies to send out delinquency letters because it should never get to two years down the line. Right. If you if your account is delinquent, then it would behoove the management company to get ahead of that and notify you that hey, there's a delinquency on your account. And, and in, in this case, somebody should have walked and said, okay, it's our fault because we didn't debit for July of that year. That's why we didn't get the amount from SurePay. Instead yeah. of there's not there's yeah. no charge, and then all of a sudden the next month there's two two maintenance fees. Yeah, that's that's a that's an an anomaly. If you right, will. <laughs> that was a very strange situation. Yeah. But yeah. to me, to blame the homeowner 
and to end up charging the homeowner $600 in attorney's fees. Yeah. I mean, that's adding insult to injury. Yeah. Well, that's a good time for a break. Let's take a, a break and we'll be right back with more from Jane. Aloha, I'm Melly James, host of Let's Mana Up. Tuesdays, every other Tuesday from 11 to 11.30. This show is meant to dive into stories of local product entrepreneurs and how they're growing their companies from right here in Hawaii. I'm so thrilled to have our show kicked off. And so please join us on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock as we talk to local entrepreneurs and hear their stories. Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you, and uh, aloha. Welcome back, and thank you again for tuning in to our show today. Today we're speaking with Jane about priority of payments and Act 192, which led to 195, or I have that the other way around. 195 that led to 192. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's, uh, we've talked a little bit about exactly what priority of payments are and how they came into play, if you will. And let's talk about what happened two years ago that led us to today in terms of why there was a need to reevaluate priority of payments. Okay. Well, there was a situation where there were foreclosures and people mm. were complaining that a lot of the foreclosures had to do with priority of payments. Mm. Being, and, and, and because, you know, the situation we talked about, about people not getting notice because it's short pay, and, and even though the, the property managers and the uh, managing agents and the associations would say, well, the statute says we can do this and we don't have to give you notice because we gave you notice when we adopted the policy, or maybe we gave you annual notices, and so you should have known. So we don't have to give you notices when we actually do it. And... And it, th what it does is it causes problems because, you know, if you're a homeowner and you're, you know, you, you signed up for SurePay, you just naturally assume that you're, you're current unless somebody tells you you're not, you know? And right. so, so, so and, and what happened is by the time they find, you know, they find out because it, the attorney is involved, you're usually into thousands of dollars. And, and the, that, yeah, and that, that leads to foreclosures. Yeah, but once the attorney is involved, um, before we even get to the foreclosure process, I find that in many instances, even the attorney letters went uh, unaddressed, if you will. Yeah. It's like there's, there's a step and a protocol to everything, but somehow it becomes a bigger problem, you know, once we're at thousands of dollars, and that should never be. And that's why, even though, you know, there are statutes that say we don't have to notify you, you know, we notified you once. Um, some of this could have been eliminated just by opening your mail or the management company just saying, hey, you're, you're past due, and these are the reasons why. Right. And, and yeah. I, I think what that says is that people need to communicate. Yeah. Yeah. People, yeah. And, and, and that means that owners have to open their mail and read it. Yes. They have to open their mail and read yeah. it. Yeah. And they have to respond. Respond. And, and, and the association on their side have to respond back and not, uh, uh, you know, bury their head in the, the sand in the and sand, say, yeah. talk to my lawyer. Yeah. I mean, that's not communicating. I mean, right. that because a, a lot of times the, talking to the attorney is worse because they don't talk English. You know, <laughs> they talk in, you know, legal gobbledygook. Yeah, and, you no, know, it's scary. Labor terms are not it's, it's place, You know, yeah. it's scary mm -hmm. and it's threatening. And so, you know, so you have these situations and, you know, where there's a lack of communication, I mean, it, basically that's what it is. It was a lack of communication. And, you know, by the time the homeowner, you know, realizes that there's a delinquency, I mean, they're, you know, it's, it's a large amount. And then they're fighting with the lawyer. And meanwhile, it's accruing. It gets larger. And when they finally get, you know, the, when they finally figure it out, they figure, okay, 
I'm, I mean, you know, my my sure pay is paying this, but it's not being applied Applied because it's going, it's it's showing it's going to the late charges. And so, if it went just to the common expenses, then my late charges and whatever, whatever, are the six thousand or the two thousand or whatever the delinquency. It's not the common expense because I've been paying the common expense. Mm -hmm. And if my maintenance fees, my monthly payments were applied only to the common expense, I'd only be owing. These other fees. These are, and they can't foreclose on those fees. That was my next question. You can cannot they foreclose? foreclose on late charges, uh, fines, interest, fines, interest and attorney's fees. And attorney's fees. So, so, so if you do the priority of payments, that, you know, those, your maintenance fees or your common expense payments that you send in every month get applied to those charges first. That's why... You know, that's work. why the, 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 the legislator who was, who was Senator Roz Baker finally said, okay, I can see what the problem is. We're getting rid of the priority of payments because that's the problem. That is the problem. And you can't apply those monthly payments. You can only apply those monthly payments to common expense payments. And yet, you, you, we're not saying you can't go after late charges, fines, and attorney legal. fees. You can, but you need to go after them. Another way, you can't take them. Yeah, that was my next question. What recourse do they have for you these? You can sue the homeowner and get a judgment. Okay. And garnish the payment. You okay. can go, if they're working, you can garnish their wages. You can garnish their bank account. But you it's can a, do that for fines. You can do that for fines. Okay. But it's, you know, but usually the fines are a couple hundred dollars. And for yeah. the legal fees, and it's usually a small it's claims thing. It's not worth it. You know, and, and yeah. that's why, you know, a lot of the associations decided to do the priority payments because it's easier. Right, right. And, and they're in a little bit of a quandary because they, oftentimes, in my experience, there are sometimes homeowners that say, ah, I'm not going to, I'm just not going to pay the fine. But the thing of it is, too, you know, uh, any payments that you owe the association are an automatic in. And that means when you sell your unit and your association reports it to escrow, they can recover it out of the escrow. Good point. But Good the, pr point. the problem is, is if you're your person, you never leave. You never <laughs> leave. You know, the association never gets paid. Yeah. You know, but the, and and the thing and and if you ha you know and if you reduce it to a lien, you gotta do initiate collection against it within six months. Otherwise, it goes away. Oh, yeah, you, in other okay, words, I didn't you, realize you, that. You, oh, you, you, then you, it becomes you, even more complicated. Yeah. In, in, in other words, if you have a debt, you need to pursue it. Yeah. You can't just let it hang around and because it will go away. But it needs to be sub substantially worth it to go after because, like you said, there are legal fees or collection fees, and these things may outweigh the, you know, right. the need to go but, after but, you know, for the, the, a couple hundred bucks. But even before the priority of, of payments policy, now, the statute always said you couldn't do foreclosure on late charges, interest, attorneys, uh, uh, attorney's fees. You, uh, you could only do foreclosure on default of, payment, of maintenance fees. Uh, and the that's why they expense. set up the priority of payment to pay everything first. Right. And then that would leave the maintenance fees out, out there so that we could go after you um, through a, and foreclose if need be. And that right. was happening a lot, I assume. And right. that's why... And was so, it, so 195, which was passed last year, all it did was repeal the poli uh, priority of payments policy. And, oh, you can't do that anymore. No more. We're, but they didn't clarify, they like, didn't what clarify. Do you, how, how do you handle and, going forward? It was right. like, don't do it anymore, but we're not going to tell you what to do. Right. And that's yeah. why 192 had to be passed. Got it. Got okay, it, because it. after the priority of payments, there are other things that came into play. Like with, uh, due to the technology, you had buildings who were doing submetering, electrical submetering, right? So that each unit had their own meter in it. And that was, you know, but it was being paid off of the common electrical bill. Right. And then they were getting their own bills and being charged. Now that was, you know, that's, that's you know, like allocation of a common expense. And then there was, uh, and then a couple of years, in the early to 2000s, um, uh, there was, you, you could adopt the insurance policy. I remember where, that. Where everybody could have their own HO6 policy, and that way they wouldn't make claims on the master policy. Right. Right? And right. everybody was told, that, you know, with all the water leakages and everything right. else, you know. I remember uh, that. Right? So, so, so that's the reason why, you know, people were told everybody's got to get an HO6. And then finally, finally, w there was a statute that said you can, you can make, you can. You can, uh, you can mandate, right? You can mandate. And, and so, but you had to have 50% of the unit owners agree to adopt such a policy. Right. Yep. 
yeah. that, that the building would mandate that everybody would have an HL6 policy. And those policies are really cheap. They're like less than $300 a year. Right, but they are an administrative nightmare to manage. Like, let's say if we mandate that you have an HL6 policy and you said, I'm not gonna, and then the association would go out and purchase for you, and then they would charge your account for that right. insurance policy, and it became kind of an administrative nightmare but, as well. But, so that's a, like a common expense payment. And there are other things that are common expense payments. And so that's why 192 has to be... Uh, to clarify. To adopt it and say, okay, you can... And, you know, because all of that is built into your budget. And people are then notified that this is your maintenance fee based on certain things. And then uh, they're told that you have to pay your own submeter charges, right? Once it, when the electrical meters yeah. go in, everybody's told, you know, here's a meter. We're, you know, we're going to measure it every month. And... And you're going to be charged your, the actual amount you use, which is a lot better for most people. Instead yeah. of, you know, paying, you know, on a pro rata basis. And so it's only fair that you're you pay it. Pay for but, usage. Your, your own usage, yeah. And since the, those, those types of charges weren't included in the statute or the definition of common expense, now under 90, uh, Bill 92, each building can then now do their own priority of payments uh, policy uh, and put in those things that they've adopted. If they have submetering, they can add submetering to the priority of payments. In other words, the common expenses plus submetering, plus HO6 premiums, plus whatever, you know, if there's a special assessment that everybody's got to pay, include that. And then, but at the end is where you add late charges, interest, attorney's fees, and fines. They have to be the very last items on your list of priorities, not the first. But maintenance fees are the only thing you can legally foreclose on. Yes. So if you pay your maintenance fees, wonderful, but you don't pay your submetering and no, your no, cable, they, they're, they're, they're it's allowed. combined. Yeah, it's combined because okay. it's a common expense. So there's expense. no way around it, so it becomes part of your maintenance fee. Right. Okay. It becomes built in, right. if you will. And so that's why we needed 192. Uh, yeah. Right, because yeah. otherwise, yeah. you know, it was confusing to It was some very confusing. About whether or not you can bill for that or whether you couldn't bill for that. And because so many buildings, you know, have, have the submetering, you know, in their buildings, and they had it before uh, Act 195, and, you know, they had the HO6 policy, now there was no way for them to recover those payments. Except, yeah. Right? So that's why we had to do the 192 so that we could clarify uh, the problem. Uh, and, and, it's a fun uh, process. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, but this is, you know, to, to me, this is a good thing for the unit owners because now, you know, hopefully because, you know, you can't apply the common expense payments to things like late charges, fines, interest, and attorney's fees, that, you know, the, if they are in, in, in a foreclosure, it's because they haven't paid their common expenses, right. which you're supposed to do right. under their governing documents. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so now, you know, we can avoid any more of those so-called abuses because mm -hmm. now we're not, you know, hunting every month to make sure that, you know, the, the, the payments are parsed correctly and applied correctly. Right. And none of it is being applied to late charges, to late charges. interest, attorney's fees, and fines. So and it's a good thing. That's the good thing. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the good thing. And, and I, I think a lot of people don't understand it, and that's why they were testifying so vigorously for the non-judicial foreclosure because they they assumed that the non-judicial foreclosures were being based on this priority of payments, but it's not anymore. Yeah. It yeah. cannot be anymore. Well, interesting topic, very necessary uh, legislation, and we could go on and on. Moral of the story, open your mail and respond. And communicate. And communicate. And both and sides communicate. have to communicate. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us uh, for a very enlightening topic, and please join us again. Again, my name is Cheryl Franklin, and my guest is Jane Susie Mora. Thank you again. Bye-bye.